So, 1,500 pounds of HE is in a culvert, and um, they didn't close the sides off in this culvert. So when it exploded, a lot of it came out the sides. In this culvert, you could, you could walk, you could stand up and walk through underneath it. Um, but most of it came out the sides, as a lot of it went up as well. But when we were sitting under it, our Humvee, it had basically like mushroom, so it blew up. And when it mushroomed, it just threw our Humvee. This is Shane Vincent. On May 24, 2007, his Humvee hit an IED in Mosul, Iraq. The explosion threw his vehicle 84 feet from the blast site, ejecting Shane and two fellow soldiers along the way. Staff Sergeant Josh Martin, the truck commander, survived the explosion. Corporal Casey Lyman died instantly. When responders got to Shane, they assumed he was dead as well. But once they realized he was still alive, Black Hawk helicopters were called in to evacuate Shane and the other survivor. I died um, I was like twice in the Black Hawk and then once in Missoula. But um, I broke my, my C2 in my neck, I broke that. Oh, my L2 vertebra on my back is a burst, so it's missing my L2 vertebra completely. Um, I had over 150 breaks and fractures in my hips and pelvis. Um, my pelvis is broken too. Um, I've got screws crisscrossing my pelvis. I've got internal fixators in my hips. Um, played with four screws in front of my pelvis. And I've got two rods and six screws holding my spine together. And I broke like my, my sinus cavity, my scapula, some other bones as well. His body was decimated by injuries. He was in a medically induced coma for four and a half months while his broken bones healed. So they were telling my wife and my family um, that I'd possibly be, be a quadriplegic from the break in my neck, but it was such a clean break that I possibly won't be. Um, for sure I'd be a paraplegic from my spine being in half. And um, so they'd wake me up from a medically induced coma and they'd tell me to squeeze their hand and I'd squeeze their hand. Um, until I moved my legs, um, keep moving my legs, they put me back out, and they kept doing that throughout the coma, medically just coma. Like, you know, like, oh, here's your medical records. I've got, like, when I ma they mail them to me, they mail me like, packages like this. That's what it is, like, for real. Like, my gosh. Despite being in a coma, though, Shane could still feel what was happening to his body. All right, so you have dreams, <clears throat> and you, you know, you have a bad dream, something's bad happening, you get scared and uh, you wake up. Well, I was in a point where I was having bad dreams, you know, terrible dreams, and um, stuff was like happening to me, and uh, I couldn't wake up at all. So it's like I could feel what was going on, like my, my injuries, say whatever happened, like my stomach. Um, I had a lot of pain in my stomach, and it's like, so it's nightmare basically had something going on like with my stomach, you know? And um, there was dreams like where I was like freezing, like freezing, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here, I'm freezing, you know? And, um, but I had a, had a seed evector. <clears throat> it's a bug in Iraq that you get, a parasite, and of course it can kill you. And um, they're afraid I might die because of that as well. So they had ice bags on armpits, ice bag crotch, under the knees, everywhere. And so you think about that, it's like, I had no clothes on, but a washcloth over me. I was literally freezing. It's like that played a part. After 11 months in the hospital, Shane came home, but his struggles were far from over. Late 2008, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I was like, I don't want to live like this. I was like, I gotta do something like for my mind, just mentally. So that's when I was like, I'm gonna go to the gym. I was like, I don't care what it says. It was hard because at that point, I could only like sit and stand for a certain amount of time because of my hips. So it's like I could maybe get up for whatever, 30 minutes at the max at time. And um, oh, it hurt so bad. It's like I had to lay down on my side, left side, pillow between my legs, and just kind of relax, not move. So I was gonna get in, good again, and get up, do some more stuff, and then go lay down again. Um, 
so it did take time, that's for sure. Shane began going to the gym on a regular basis, but not for the physical benefits. In fact, simply lifting the smallest weight put Shane through incredible pain. But it gave his mind something to do, something to concentrate on other than his current situation. And it's funny because I went from pushing some weight to like getting on a bench and um, having like five, maybe 10 pounds on each side of the bar, I'm just trying to bench that. And I was in pain, like I was hurting so much. And, um, and it, was just, it was agony, but um, it was helping me so much mentally. Um, I just kept at it and kept pursuing it. And um, my body was just, the pain was become manageable and bearable to deal with the more I did it. And um, just kept at it because it's helped me so much mentally. And I was just feeling so good, like I was actually doing something. It took over five years of constant work, constant pain, constant hope. Shane is now a certified personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness in Tulsa. Recently, he shared his story with a group of Alorica call agents who work with veterans over the phone. His story helped them understand what their callers go through. I, I just like talking to the members and doing what they need to get done because sometimes, you know, it might be a little harder for them, but for us, it's, you know, it's just a breeze. So I like getting that call and just being able to handle something so smoothly for them that that may have been rough for them. I'm able just to take care of them smoothly. And I like just being able to give back in a way to them that they gave to us. So. You know, it's not like a business aspect here. It does carry a big, like, family-oriented, you know, where we can rely on each other, we rely on my members, my TMs. Um, when I first started here, I didn't really know what was going on. I never worked at a call center. Um, so basically, I was, I was like, what's going on? Um, so when I went upstairs, you know, and listened to all, you know, our members and hearing everything that they had, you know, dealt with, you know, a lot on the phone with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm so emotional. I'm trying not to cry with your story because I don't want to cry, but um, that's very, uh, I don't know, I can't imagine what you went through, but I do appreciate it, you know, and from talking to members and everything, I do love working here, you know. I did have, you know, one person, you know, tell me that, you know, he had a hard time in Iraq and it just made me tear up and I was, you know, trying to help him as much as I can with just talking and that's all he really wanted to do. He just wanted to balance and to talk and someone to hear and I was there for him. I appreciate that so much. I want you guys to know that because it doesn't live on. It really does. It's like my wife too. She's called. Some of you guys have helped her too. But so we appreciate you guys so much what you guys do for veterans and all of us. It, uh, it is so important. It's, it's amazing. Like plus, like, like James said, the moral you guys have upstairs and stuff. That's so awesome to see that. Just how supportive you guys are. Man, I just don't ever stop. Like, always push yourself. Um, don't ever listen to anybody and tell you they can't what you can and can't do. Because you can do anything you put your mind to. People that want to help you, let them help you. Like, let them they want to, you know. Um, don't try to cover it up with, with drinking. As I only guess it makes things worse. That's for sure. It's like I've, I've learned that from experience. Um, I've tried many things to cover it up. And just deal with it. But the best thing I know, like, that I found out is, of course, just talking about it, not holding it in. Um, but for the longest time, I was like, this has happened to me. I was like, I don't want anyone else to carry the burden or anything like that at all. Um, like, I'm going to deal with it. I'm tough. I'm going to deal with it. And then it, it just, it wears on you. And um, it makes your life miserable because it's all you think about. Um, but if you can find just different avenues, of course, to help you cope, something there, you know, focus on goals. Um, 
you like to go ride your bike, go ride your bike, do that, you know, get fixated on something that's positive in your life.